recently completed the audiobook version of my new novella, Gross, Dr. Death Worm Rises. Um, this is a novella that is uh, currently available on uh, the Kindle format and uh, more than likely soon will be published as a paperback uh, available through Amazon. Um, after completing the audiobook version uh, as a promotional article, uh, it, which may also be available uh, uh, online as well, we'll see. Uh, I had the urge to, uh, as I've done in the past, create a, a video to go with it uh, and just share with you some elements of my uh, workspace or office, if you will, um, some of the articles that compose it, and uh, uh, to share uh, some of my more recent work and some other cool things. And anyway, that's that's pretty much it. And I'll try to be brief and to the point and not bore you too much. Uh, I would like to begin by uh, showing you. Uh, this is uh, my new professional microphone that I used to record the uh, uh, audiobook on, and this was given to me by my good friend uh, Aaron Rickert, who's uh, practically been like a brother to me since we were probably about five years old at, uh, when we met at day camp, and uh, a kindred spirit, a uh, musician uh, more so than I am. Uh, he uh, owns Oak Park Music Studio and is the guitarist for the band Time Lord, which everyone should listen to. And what happened was Aaron heard some uh, previous works that I'd done, uh, some narrated comics and whatnot, and uh, he was frustrated by the poor sound quality. And regardless of that, these weren't meant to meant as uh, professional works anyway. They were just uh, little promotional things or fun little things I did. Um, uh, he insisted he buy me this professional microphone, which I wasn't going to object to him doing that. He got it for me. Uh, so Aaron, thank you very much. Uh, and even though this microphone sadly does not compensate for my lack of professional reading skills, it still um, gets a much better sound quality and I'm, I'm, it just makes my previous, the sound quality of my previous works that I did with a microphone I bought when I was like 18 years old, you know, makes me realize the tremendous difference in sound quality. Uh, you can also, one thing this microphone does though is it catches the sounds of my cat <laughs> walking around on uh, the cushion on the windowsill there, or my uh, chair creaking, but uh, that's a, it's, it's a good trade-off regardless. Okay, um, this new toy of mine, this is a digital drawing tablet equipped with Manga Studio, the, the first version, cheapest version, uh, and I would like to thank uh, Micah, Chelsea, and a friend Matt for stopping by my table at the uh, last Roanoke Valley Comic Con, and by the way, thank you to the Garby family for putting those on and having me as always. Uh, uh, but I'd like to uh, thank uh, Micah, Chelsea, and Matt for stopping by my table and uh, introducing me to this very handy tool. Now, I don't have to kill as many trees to create uh, comics and illustrations when I use this. It's very convenient. I love this thing. Um, I had thought that I, it would be much more expensive to get something to do that. Uh, you know, my buddy Lee Horton got the really high end one, which knocks my socks off. It's a fantastic thing. I just uh, got the basic, just want some basic tools for now. Okay, uh, more recent work. A great uh, horror thriller author, Scott Nicholson, our children's books. Uh, the first one, If I Were Your Monster. The second one, Too Many Witches. These were very fun to do. These are available, of course, in paperback and Kindle formats. The most recent one, I Declare, that being a name, uh, Ida and Claire. Uh, is only available on Kindle at this moment, not paperback, so I can't show you the physical form because it doesn't exist yet. Uh, but these were a lot of fun to do. To all the readers out there, in particular those that wrote the very kind and warm reviews, which is probably the greatest feeling to a creator uh, ever, I uh, thank you. Thank you to the readers. Thank you to Scott, as always. These are a lot of fun, a lot of work, but uh, looking forward to doing more. Um, I recently received, and shame on me, I have not read yet <laughs> in its entirety, the latest issue of Strange Eons is Strange Eons issue 8. This features me, Eric York, Rob Corliss, Bill McClory, Vincent Ferrant, and much more, of course. Uh, this, is a, this is just a beautiful magazine. Uh, Nick Gucker, their staff artist, always has these, these really cool uh, little um, phony promotional cards for movies that don't exist. This is... The, it looks like the uh, family film version of a Lovecraft story, which I guess could happen. You never know. 
uh, but uh, everyone at this magazine, uh, the, the the editors and the and even the contributors have been uh, just really great to get to know uh, through communications. Uh, a lot of great talents in this magazine. Uh, uh, talents like Robert Price, uh, Cody Goodfellow, um, uh, Joe Pulver have appeared in this magazine. It's uh, just a real honor to be a part of this uh, very cool magazine. And, and I'm real happy that someone's actually still doing uh, print versions of magazines. It's not that you lack integrity if you do, um, uh, you know, if, if you're not in paperback format, but it's just real cool if you do. <laughs> it's real cool to have something to hold. Um, Anyway, in this magazine, this really uh, thrilled me. <clears throat> a lot of people would not take this as a uh, compliment, but I did. Um, Lee Davis, part two of a chilling new strip from The Wizard of Gore. Now, uh, being a creator of horror, being called uh, The Wizard of Gore by Strange Eons, that's a, that's a very, very big compliment in, uh, in my realm. So, thank you, uh, uh, Kelly, Lawrence, Amiat, um, everybody. Very cool. Everybody get this magazine. Okay, I just uh, came across this. This is actually a few years old now, but uh, Kenny Keene's a great, uh, great comic artist and writer, and he releases, uh, I think, on a yearly basis around Halloween time, Horrific Tales Anthology. This is one that featured a story by me, and this is great campy horror fun. I uh, love it. Uh, Kenny Keene does great work, does uh, some cool zombie stories. Good guy. Always get to see this dude over at the uh, Roanoke Valley Comic Con. Good stuff. Okay, some uh, from. Oh wait, no. Before I get to those, I would like to introduce everybody to a fantastic, uh, one of my favorite horror, small press horror publishing houses. This is Postmortem Press, and uh, it was, I believe, fate that led me uh, into this publishing house. Uh, Eric Beeb, and I'm hope I hope I'm pronouncing that last name right, drove by my wife and I in his vehicle, and there was a sign for Postmortem Press on the back of his vehicle, and I said, Postmortem Press. That sounds like a uh, small press uh, horror publisher. Uh, I think maybe this is fate saying this is where I should get some of my shorter work published. And before I knew it, I had some short work published in uh, Moncor Mort, I hope I'm pronouncing that right too. Uh, my Dead Heart is a fantastic horror anthology. Gr just, just great stuff, great, uh, great authors, great contributors, lots, lots of good stuff in here. And this is what came next. This is like a two-part um, zombie anthology. This is New Dawn Fades, and this was a lot of fun for me to uh, get to share one of my zombie stories, and I wrote it specifically for this, of course, and uh, tried to give it my own personal flair. Uh, I was uh, pretty happy with the story that came out. And, um, yeah, zombies. Me being a zombie nerd and having grown up on Fulci and Romero and all that good Dead Alive and uh, uh, Della Morte, Della More, you name it. <laughs> Resident Evil, of course. Uh, real cool. Uh, and what's even cooler and more exciting, uh, especially considering all the Lovecraftian anthologies I read over the years, um, uh, the the book coming next, uh, Torn Realities, is a Lovecraftian anthology, which uh, I uh, had the pleasure of working with Paul Anderson, a, um, a great editor. Working working with uh, Paul as an editor was uh, real neat because um, in a short time he really tackled. Uh, the rough edges of my work and help me smooth it out and uh, just uh, it, and and uh, it's really cool as a creator getting to work with an editor like that that's uh, uh, really really caring and meticulous for the uh, work they're they're taking into their publishing house uh, so that was that was just real neat and uh, uh, getting the um, right off right uh, uh, contributing to a Lovecraftian anthology from my list of things to do is is real cool. Um, so yeah, great publisher. If you like horror, and why shouldn't you uh, check it out? Okay, I think uh, I think I'm going to show you these and then wrap this up. But this gross audio book, this actually follows directly after the adventure uh, through De Gross through Demon Skin, which was originally published in Strange Eons, um, which you shouldn't hesitate to buy all the issues if it if you so desire. Uh, I wouldn't discourage it. Um, it uh, through Demon Skin appeared in a four part story. Uh, and Strange Eons, and uh, it was a lot of fun, and uh, this featured a lot of character development, uh, which carried over from uh, Donald and his friends originally appeared in a self-published graphic uh, novel I created, uh, and I wanted to, I wanted to uh, um, take some of the characters and develop them, and uh, I've really grown with these guys, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. 
uh, but it's a lot of work to do a full comic, and uh, that's why that's that's why uh, the novella. You know, I gave these guys the novella treatment. I wanted to give these guys more adventures, but doing a full comic is a lot of work. And this promotional article is actually a narrated comic. This is all the comics, all all four parts in one full comic, uh, narrated by yours truly, uh, with cheesy voice acting. Uh, this is a DVD. This is a promotional article. Some people have seen it. Um, Okay, now let's move over to the more uh, horror, straight horror oriented side of my work. Um, first, I had a nightmare one night uh, that was very vivid and grim and disturbing and I woke up and I, I said, well, I gotta take notes on that one. It became this novella, Dead Body Factory. Now, I originally wanted to call this Skeleton Factory after something I, uh, a story I invented as a kid. I, I just always thought it was a cool name. That name's been used by two other, uh, two other parties that I found. Uh, so I went with Dead Body back to Factory, which sounds very disturbing, but it's suiting for a story like this, so why not? Um, now, obviously, uh, there's a point. There's a point to all the mayhem, uh, but uh, yeah, it went pretty dark. Um, so, whatever. Uh, okay, Reflecting Shadows is my novel. Now, I intend to release this as a uh, Kindle book and probably a uh, paperback soon. This is the audiobook version with the poor sound quality from my old microphone. Uh, very poor production, but it was just to get the story out to some people out there. You might be one of them if you're watching this now, I don't know. Uh, uh, I want to give this story one more polish before I make it available, but if you like horror, watch for it. I had a lot, a lot of fun writing it. Um, anyway. Now this is uh, unstitched. This is a horror graphic novel in PDF form on a disc. This is another promotional article. Uh, this one is after I uh, finished uh, a lot of the gross work, which is you know a little more PG, PG-13 at most. This is just uh, straight up. After after I got done with that, I just wanted to get all the uh, straight horror out of my system. I had a real urge to do this, so this is a uh, full, this is a black and white uh, graphic novel. I made uh, one comic as a follow-up. Uh, just, just had that that part of me that loves horror so much. Just had to do this. This is not released anywhere in any uh, way, except the follow-up comic I did self-publish at one point. I'm not sure how, when, or where I'll release this. Uh, the quality isn't that good. Like I said, I mostly just did it to get it out of my system, so I wasn't putting a lot of pressure on myself. Some areas of the comic become more uh, complex than others. Some of the illustrations are better, but uh, really it's uh, just like having a lot of ideas that I want to string into a coherent story, and there's a purpose to it, but there's a lot of carnage and mayhem, so, uh, uh, which gave me a little scapegoat for uh, creating, creating all the violence, it's got, a, I guess, a positive message in it, so, you know, once again, that's the beauty of horror, you can create a lot of, a lot of ugly, uh, but if you give it a point, it doesn't seem like it's just pure gratuitous nonsense. Uh, but then again, I'm not saying there's anything. I'm actually uh, I'm actually editing a new ending for this uh, video because I realized that uh, I was getting off onto a spiel about what makes visceral horror work and what makes it uh, fail. <laughs> and um, I checked myself and reminded myself that uh, that was not the purpose of this video. Um, so trying to keep it to the point, I'm making this new ending. And uh, the good news is I think I've pretty much covered everything I wanted to cover. Except for uh, just one thing. I just wanted to share with everybody uh, this, this original painting. Uh, I believe it's acrylic on canvas with uh, marker rendering. And this is, uh, was given to me by Cole Plymail. This is a Cole Plymail original. And uh, Cole and his family have been great supporters of mine. They always come and visit me at my, at my table and my work at the uh, Roanoke Valley Comic Convention. And um, I can honestly say that uh, for as dedicated and as hardworking as, uh, and as uh, imaginative as uh, Cole is, um, you know, his talent, uh, you will all come to know Cole and his work uh, at some point or another. Uh, so anyway, thank you Cole very much. Re really can't, really can't thank you enough for this great piece. And, um, uh, and just, just so everybody knows, yes, this is mine and no, it's not for sale. And I'm sorry. But you'll get your chance to get your own, maybe. Uh, okay. Well, with, with that, 
I will uh, say goodbye, uh, but not before just thanking everybody who in, uh, in, in any way has uh, <clears throat> shown support with their, their friendship or kind words or what have you um, in, in any little way that's uh, helped me with my work. Um, so, so thank you. And uh, I hope you in, enjoy, if, if you're watching this, is the uh, supplemental article with the uh, uh, audiobook for Gross Doctor Death Worm Rises, then um, uh, I, hope you've, I hope you've found it enlightening. No, not at all. Okay, I'm just going to stop right there. And I will say God bless you, and thank you, and bye-bye, and good night, and take care. Don't drink and drive.